Bonjour, Bolovinaka. Welcome to the new season of the Pacific Way. We look forward to bringing you some wonderful and interesting stories throughout the course of this year. Coming up, we have some lively entertainment, but before that, a story from the Solomon Islands. Over the years, Choisal Province in Solomon Islands has found itself at the front line of a global struggle against the impacts of climate change. The impact is visible on the island communities, their living conditions, and especially food security. The Secretariat of the Pacific Community, or SPC, is responding to food security concerns through a project funded by the United States Agency for International Development, or USAID. Let's take a journey to Choisal Province and find out how they are addressing food security in communities. In a remote corner of the Western Pacific Ocean lies a group of widely scattered islands that make up Solomon Islands. Here, sweeping waves of change are taking place, threatening their very own existence. These distant and isolated islands now find themselves at the front line of a global struggle against the impacts of climate change. Choisal Province, or Lauru as it is known locally, is one of the nine provinces of Solomon Islands and is located in the northwest of Solomon Islands archipelago. One of the more remote provinces of Solomon Islands, it consists mainly of Choisal Island, two small islands, Wangina and Rob Roy, and the small island of Taro, the provincial capital. It has a population of 26,372, which is 5.5% of the total population and with 4,712 households. Here, people's livelihoods depend on subsistence farming with very limited commercial activity. Taro is the provincial capital of Atuesol province, so it has got this urban a mixture of urban and, and rural kind of setting to it, but it really, in terms of the local food, it depends a lot on, this, on the surrounding areas for food. Food production is dependent on surrounding areas, but it also has a dependence on uh, uh, food from imported food, eh? from commercial food, from, from shops and uh, from, uh, uh, from, from people who come in to sell their produce over here. But like the rest of the world, the changing times also herald growing concerns, one of which is climate change and food security. Addressing food security in the long term has emerged as a major issue in the Pacific region with extreme weather events likely to impact food production in the future. The climate challenge we, we, we face in Chosal are enormous. So within Taro itself, you, you, Taro Island, you, you, you tend to, to see uh, coastal erosion. This is also evident everywhere in the communities around Chosal, uh, more so in the southern and northern part of Chosal. A number of communities have had houses washed away. And th the thing is this, people think that's normal. I mean, they, they thought that that's part of life. They didn't realize that this all came about because of climate change. So a number of things... The Secretariat of the Pacific Community SPC is responding to food security concerns through a project funded by the United States Agency for International Development to enhance the resilience of food production systems to the effects of climate change in Choisal. This project 
is a component of a larger program, the Choiseul Climate Change Program, GCAP, supported by SPC, USAID, the German Agency for International Cooperation, GIZ, the Secretariat of the Pacific Regional Environment Program, SPREP, the Pacific Australia Climate Change Adaptation and Planning Program, PACSAP, OSAID, the United Nations Development Program, UNDP, and the Nature Conservancy, who are all collaborating to support communities strengthen food production systems in Choiseul. The Choiseul Integrated Climate Change Program, GCAP, was officially launched in January 2013 through the first ever planning workshop held in Taro, which included almost 148 community representatives, provincial and national government representatives, implementing regional agencies and development partners. This is something that's not only relevant for the Solomon Islands, but relevant across the region. Historically, over the last 10 or 15 years, the approach to climate change has been very much a project-by-project project approach. And it was an opportunity to try something new of actually bringing all the partners into one consistent framework and focusing attention across the different sectors in one province. So if this model works, it's something that we can actually use to scale up across the region and it will be a much more effective and sustainable model for climate change adaptation activities. Well, what's uh, interesting in Choisel is that all of the partners have agreed to cooperate on the basis of agreed roles in support of the Choisel province. So this is a project that's not a, a SPREP project or an SPC project or a GIZ project, it's a Choiseul province project. So we're all cooperating in uh, what appears to date to be a very effective way to try to help the Choiseul province meet its objectives. It's the first time that we managed to pull something like that together and this alone is already a, a great achievement. There will be quite a lot of challenges ahead, you know, because each organization and each ministry, also the regional organizations, have their own rules and regulations, their own specifications and all that. So there's still quite a lot of stony way ahead, but I'm very optimistic that we manage. And by pulling all these together, we naturally have much more resources available, channeled towards a common goal. Three months after the successful training workshop, a 19-member team comprising personnel from the Ministry of Agriculture and Livestock, SPC, GIZ and UNDP visited communities in Choiseul province in April 2013 to establish food security priorities after carrying out vulnerability and adaptation assessments. The objective of the mission was to carry out a, a participatory um, rural assessment um, um, work on the two communities that we selected in Choizo, and they are Sepa and Loimuni. We, the aim was to find out the vulnerability of the food um, uh, production systems that they have and what um, recommendations that we can uh, give to these um, communities. So PAC uh, from the beginning of this year uh, has undergone the land cover mapping of uh, Solomon Islands and also for Choisel uh, whereby we bring in uh, the technical uh, people from Solomon's uh, namely Department of Lands, Forestry and uh, agriculture to do the visual interpretation of the satellite imagery that we have and at the end of that we are able to produce the land cover map of uh, Solomon Islands. SEPA is located in the south of Choiseul province. 
During the visit here, the team felt that more time was needed in the communities for consultations, adding that coordination with the province was an added challenge given the capacity and communication constraints in Choisol. For villages here, the challenges are greater. Both the protons and being the food, the potato, taro, yam, like that. But this time, no more. This time, in change it about the red all the way and uh, land too. Like walk along inside the river, okay. Land come, spoil them every garden. Long if I love a woman, so this time, plus salt for cacaya. The plus salt for cacaya. Sometimes, some people are family, some people are long money. Some people are no money, long evening. But I really stop it. People are st uh, like it. But. In Loimuni village, closer to the provincial capital Taro, the local diet consists mainly of sweet potatoes, cassava, slippery cabbage, and fern. However, food shortage is a major challenge and the limited choice of crops and vegetables is causing a low diversity in the diet of households. In 1950, I was here. 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 I was Congo time, I came up long so for a year more, so 1960 over, 1974, and all the same. I put a change, important time, potato. Okay, Congo came this time, I put a change, 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 the team has called for an urgent need to provide training on good agriculture practices and pest and disease control. The energy sources are really pointing toward imported, but again, it's a little bit below the, the, the WHO and FAO calorie daily requirement per person. Yeah? So that shows that, you know, their energy and protein consumption or intake for each day is falling below the daily requirement for a person to be food secure. When we asked them what, what do you think would be the best adaptation strategies for your communities, they just came up with a lot of training, assistance with the new varieties of vegetables, uh, training on food preservation and also a lot of training for young mothers on proper nutrition. Food security is one of the many challenges faced by communities in Choisol. The Choisol Integrated Climate Change Program provides a space for stakeholders to coordinate their efforts, share resources and implement cost-effective and sustainable adaptation actions, and strengthen management approaches in implementing a multi-partner climate change adaptation program. The program, which initially started as discussions between national governments and regional agencies in 2011, has come into realization with six agencies and development partners signing off on a partner's agreement to kick-start the pilot program in 2013. We try to work on the enabling environment first. Uh, we just had a policy now released. Uh, we're now looking at how we implement that policy. We're trying to mainstream climate change into the various ministries, sectors. So that's happening uh, slowly, but it's relatively good progress. 
and also to the provincial government level. It's very important that all of us play our roles. I think the important thing is we all try to make everybody aware that we have to take some, some responsibility in the decisions that we make on a daily basis, even at the family level, uh, traditional level, tribal level, community level, even at a political level. I think uh, that's, that's the, the challenge before us. Welcome back to the Pacific Way. At the last Festival of Pacific Arts in Solomon Islands, Rapa Nui, or Easter Islands as it is commonly known, was a crowd favourite. Rapa Nui is a colony of Chile and the language spoken is Spanish together with the local Rapa Nui language. So we do have a Spanish-speaking group of Pacific Islanders. Enjoy this lively performance from Rapa Nui. <laughs>
We hope you enjoyed this episode. If you want to find out more about tonight's stories or the show, you can find The Pacific Way online at www.sbc.int forward slash rmc or drop us a line on Facebook. Until the next time, tata ni samwade.